And now, from the Career Tech Studios in Stillwater, here's your host, Courtney DeHoff. Her name doesn't resonate like that of Rosa Parks, and she did not garner the kind of national attention that Martin Luther King did. But Oklahoma's Clara Looper was a pioneering woman in the civil rights movement. Leading one of the first sit-ins at a drugstore in Oklahoma City, Ms. Looper is credited for forcing local eateries to desegregate all across Oklahoma. Throughout her life, she worked for equal rights until her death this year at 88. Our Jessica Lowe was able to visit with her as part of a black history exhibit at the Oklahoma History Center. And today, we remember this remarkable woman. For the young people behind these paper plates, something as simple as eating at a lunch counter was impossible, all because of the color of their skin. A harsh reality that's documented in the African American exhibit at the New History Center in Oklahoma City. Curator Bruce Fisher says that this is the first permanent exhibit that tells a history story that's never been told. Every facet of Oklahoma history involves something that relates to the African American story. And in this rotunda, there's a two thirds dimensional uh, exhibit of the Winnie Mae, the great airplane flown by Wiley Post. Everybody knows who Wiley Post is. He was a great aviator from Oklahoma. But most people don't know that the first black aviators to fly transcontinentally from LA to New York were also from Oklahoma J. Herman Banning and Tom and Thomas Allen. These guys were pioneers in their own rights and great aviators. But that story has largely been overlooked. Un until now. And Fisher says the list of black pioneers goes on and on throughout Oklahoma history. After spending six and a half years talking to our state's civil rights leaders and collecting archives and artifacts, Fisher says that this educational exhibit is like no other. You can go through the education section of the African American exhibit and hear the actual voices of, of people like Roscoe Dungy. Um, he was the foremost uh, civil rights uh, activist in, in early Oklahoma history. Hear his reaction the day they announced the decision of Brown versus Board of Education. You can actually hear what his response was. And during our visit, Fisher introduced us to a woman who he says has been a giant in the civil rights movement in Oklahoma, Clara Looper. Not enough praise has been given to Clara Lupa. She did something that no one else could do. She did something that the courts couldn't do. But she used a nonviolent method of sit-ins to actually open public accommodations for African Americans in Oklahoma. But we were talking about winning a revolution where the white man certainly needed help in seeing what America was all about, would be in a position so after the sit-in movement, we could continue to progress if we had used some other tactics, we could not have progress. A civil rights icon of Oklahoma, Looper took a group of students from Oklahoma City to an NAACP rally in New York City. My young people had the opportunity to ride on a bus, to go into restaurants, cafes, and eat, which is really a big thing because they had been part of the Jim Crow programs of their home state. Then we came back to my beloved South, where we could not eat in any restaurant. We would have to find a grocery store and get some bologna and crackers or something. But when we got to Oklahoma City, these young people decided that they would take on a project. And they said, well, we have enjoyed eating in public places. Let's take on public accommodations. And this we did. So on August 19, 1958, Miss Looper and her students marched to Katz Drugstore and started what became known as the longest nonviolent sit in movement in the history of this country. But it wasn't until 1964 that barriers to public accommodations were removed. And Clara Looper says the African American community has reached new heights since then. We've come a long ways, believe me. We've come to, from the back of the buses, to the front of the buses, to drivers, to owners. But there's still more work to be done. When you start behind in a race, you have to run twice as fast as other people in order to catch up. What kept me moving? I had to move. I came from a family that believed in something that was bigger than themselves. My family believed in the sun when it didn't shine and in the rain when it didn't fall. They believed in a God that they had never seen. And they believed that someday 
we would be able to stand and stand strong. So unlike many courageous others who never saw freedom at its best, Clara Looper still stands strong in her commitment and contributions to the African American experience. Without the prayers, the hope, the training, the investment, and the sacrifice of a lot of people, there would be no Clara Looper. I want to be remembered as a lover of people who wanted more than anything else to help somebody, knowing that if I could help somebody, I would not have lived in vain. Oh, Making the African-American story heart, not just one of obstacles overcome and racial battles won, I but a message of hope in the stories that still live on today. We shall overcome someday.